Good morning, you guys, and welcome to another episode of Bellies, Babies, and Birth. Special episode today, we are actually going to use the video from this episode, so we will see how that goes. Um, I'm really, really excited to have Cheyenne Kopax on with us today. Um, if you've ever listened to an episode before, you know we're really big on education and really big on connecting community partners, especially for moms and families and especially, especially, especially here in the West Valley, um, Peoria, Glendale, Surprise, all of that stuff in the Phoenix area. So really thrilled to have her on. Um, we've met a couple times now and lots of circles overlapping and she's offering a really, really great service. But before we dive into that, Shiana, I would love for you to just tell us a little bit about you as a person, like where you grew up and how you came into this work and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. It is an honor. Um, like you, I'm very passionate about our West Side here. I feel like for a lot of years we've been lacking in resources. So um, it is also a passion of mine to make sure our people are well taken care of. So yes, I am Cheyenne. I am a family nurse practitioner. I was born and raised in California, but I've been in Arizona for the last 12 years. Um, so not quite uh, considered a native, but Arizona is home for me. I've set up some roots here and I have a beautiful family here who we've kind of recruited like everyone else who lives here uh they tend to recruit all their family members so somehow uh started as my brother and now all of us are here which is great so yeah I, I love the state of Arizona I love being a nurse practitioner I love taking care of people but aside from that Arizona is a beautiful place to be I love hiking getting outside and just enjoying our gorgeous weather uh aside from the summer so yeah We've got nine pretty awesome months and yes. six that are just paradise. Yes. Totally yeah. Right agree. now is prime time. It is gorgeous outside. So, and with having two young kids, it's nice to be able to go outside and enjoy, enjoy the scenery. So how old are your kiddos? I have a, I keep saying two and a half, but he's going to be three in May. So he's okay. almost three. And then I have a nine month old son as well. So I've got two boys. Awesome. You are in yeah. the thick of it. I'm in the thick of it and my house is very quickly turning into a WWE zone, uh, which is, <laughs> is really fun to watch, um, but it's a little bit chaotic having yeah. two boys. <laughs> Do you at least have any female pets of any kind? I have one, but you know, she has a couple screws loose, so she really adds <laughs> to the chaos. So we're just all around. We are just a, somewhat of a, what would we call us a four man circus here. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, you know, at least you can still play man-to-man -man defense with the kiddos, so. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We're really just prepping them for their future, so it's it's amazing. So when you became a nurse practitioner, you weren't automatically out on your own doing mobile work. So tell us a little bit about that journey for you and how you came to make that sort of your sole focus. Yeah, absolutely. So when I was fresh out of school as a nurse practitioner, I went into a primary care clinic, which I think is probably pretty standard for most family nurse practitioners coming out of school. Uh, you know how it is. It's you find a job where you can get a job and you you start figuring out who you are as a provider. So I was in a clinic setting, you know, seeing upwards of 25 patients a day. And I always knew there was something else I wanted to do, but I didn't quite know what it was. And so, you know how, when you look back, you, you realize it was all part of the priming process to get you to where you are now. And I was very quickly, I realized that I just was not cut out to see 25 to 30 patients a day and not get the chance to connect with them. So I will always be a nurse first and working as a nurse, working at the bedside, I did oncology. And so you see people in probably if not the number one spot, top five worst times of their lives. And you form those deep connections with people. And so I was really missing that in the primary care clinic. And so I decided from there, it was right when COVID hit, I decided after a while to go out into the community because with uh, the pandemic going on, lots of people weren't able to get good quality care. You know, places were closing down. They were only doing telemedicine. Nobody was putting hands on patients any longer and we need that. And so I started working out in the community for another company and I fell in love with mobile medicine. You learn so much when you go into someone's house, uh, good and bad, but you, 
you learn why people can and can't do things or why they may believe in certain things and not in others. And I didn't realize that before when people were coming into the clinic, it was like everyone got the same, the same treatment plan, the same protocol, the same meds, and you just kind of become robotic. And so that sparked my passion for mobile medicine. And then I said, you know what? I am so tired of having to really conform to insurance is saying you have to see X number of patients to be successful. Or if you start a practice, you know, you have bigger companies that are coming in and buying you out. So I decided to go out on my own and start at your doorstep medical and concierge care. So it is a cash based, cash based practice only. I don't take insurance at this time. Um, and really the goal of doing that is by not conforming to the norms of insurance I can have longer appointments. I can have 45 minute appointments and not have to stress about I'm going to be here till 6 p.m. or I'm going to miss time with my family or, you know, just it, all of those those things that go along with working in a clinic setting. And so I decided that that would be the best model for me so that I could provide good quality care and not have to conform to the norm, the new norm, I should say. It's funny, even though you're a nurse practitioner and I'm PT some really similar aspects to our journey, like, yeah, clinic work, 20 plus patients, mm -hmm. limited time with them, 20 minutes. Um, then you have to pass them off to a tech. Then I did home health um, when my kiddos were smaller, which was really nice for the flexibility. But you're right. You learn so much more about people's environment and why they do what they do and are what they are. And I think it also gives you a lot of insight into um, how to motivate them more, like even just trying to get them more active or things that it was obvious they cared about doing. So I think, and, and now having a cash practice as well, I know one misconception that clients ask us a lot about, and I think is true even with, even just the word concierge, right? I think people see it as elite or high end or, um, out of reach almost automatically, even before mm -hmm. asking prices, even before, you know, they hear cash practice, they think it's going to cost them so much money, more money. And I know we educate a lot about, you know, think about your co-pays or going three times a week and time to get a babysitter and time to drive there and to all of those other aspects that are costly. Tell us a little bit more. Cause I find, I feel like your rates are incredibly reasonable, but what are some of the things that, not even just the prices, but like, what are some of the things that you want people to recognize about concierge services and concierge medical care? Yeah. So no, you make a great point that that word tends to have a negative connotation associated with it, where people feel that it's out of their reach. It's only for people who have an excess of money and you want someone to come to them and it's, and it's very expensive. So um, you know, my goal coming into this was to create a price point that was feasible for just your normal day to day human being, not anything where you have to make above a certain threshold and money per year to be able to afford my services. So I really want people to understand that just because it's concierge doesn't mean it has to be expensive. And a lot of times I use my own example. So I had pneumonia a couple of years back before I started doing this. And I went into urgent care, felt like it was my only option, which at that point it probably was, but I paid a $35 copay. And then three weeks later, I received my bill and my bill, I think it was like $250, $275. And when I was in there, I even told the provider like, Hey, I think I have pneumonia, you know, my ribs hurt. And she's like, yeah, I think that's what it is. Wrote the prescription, sent me on my way. I mean, it was maybe five minutes and you know, you're lucky nowadays that people even put a stethoscope to your heart and your lungs to hear what's going on. And so I paid my, my copay plus my portion of what would have, what wasn't covered by insurance for, th for that, for poor care. And it was really unfortunate. And so I don't want that for my clients. I want my clients to feel like what they're experiencing and what they're feeling I'm listening to. And I'm listening to them as a whole, trying to figure out what's going on. And then the price points are very reasonable. So when you start looking at my prices, I do different, I have different models to really kind of help with whatever you're looking for. I have some people who just use me as needed for sick visits and I do what's called a la carte pricing. So, um, and I'll go into it a little bit if you don't mind as far as cost goes, but 
you know, a la carte, I come to your home, it's a 45 minute visit, it's $175. That includes any medications I have, you know, medications will be run through your insurance, but I don't charge extra for every little thing I do as far as writing prescriptions, if we have to order x-rays, things like that. And so um, I have that style and I have people who just kind of use me, especially during six season. They're like, hey, I can't get in with my provider, my pediatrician. And can you come out and come take a listen and figure out what's going on? And then I do my memberships, which this is really when you start talking concierge, people think that it's going to be thousands and thousands of dollars to have a concierge provider. I charge my adult patients $79 a month. And that includes all your visits. And it also includes getting you set up on a HIPAA compliant app where you can call or text me seven days a week. So you have that access to your provider, which I think you can probably relate to this struggle of trying to get a hold of your provider is so painful. You know, you call the front, you leave a message, you wait for a call back. So my goal is to eliminate that. I don't want people to feel like I am, you know, untouchable, that they can't get a hold of me, they can't reach me. Um, Because that's just, we've gotten so far away from having personal relationships with patients and it's just, it's painful. It's so painful. Well, and I think, um, thank you. Yeah, that was extremely thorough. And I think too, something that is important for you to share, and you and I even talked about this when we met um, last week, but share a little bit about, um, I think maybe people don't exactly know what nurse practitioners are qualified Mm -hmm. to do. Or the difference of like, well, what about if you need an actual doctor or what things you are able to handle or would have to refer out that kind of stuff. Clarify that for, for our listeners. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm so glad you asked, cause I do get that question a lot. So in the state of Arizona, we are so fortunate as clinicians. Um, I practice independently as a nurse practitioner, so I don't require any type of physician oversight. So anything that you have seen a medical doctor, a physician for, uh, I can do all of the same. So I can do your visits. I can write prescriptions. I can send refills, labs, images. And I always have a conversation with my clients because uh, a lot of times people come to me and say, hey, I have this list of things that I just need answers for. And can you fix it? Can you help me? And I always am very honest. I'm one person and I know my limits. I will never tell you, oh yeah, I can handle all of that. But what I will tell you is let me get to the point that I'm capable of doing within my education, my comfort level. And if I need to refer you out, I will. So I can send referrals. I have lots of people that need, you know, dermatologists, or uh, I see a lot of female patients who need to go see GYN. And so there's, I'm capable of doing that and sending those referrals out so we can have specialists as a part of your team. And then we all communicate, you know, we send our notes back and forth so that we are operating as one team. So I can do uh, pretty much anything. And if it's ever something that I'm uncomfortable with, I always have that conversation and let people know. Yeah. And I think too, if we think back, like most of the time when we schedule at the office, we're usually seeing a nurse practitioner Mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I know my last OB appointment, it was her nurse practitioner, which is fine. Um, and like you said, they can, but I think some people get confused and aren't really sure. And they're like, what about labs or what about scripts? So that's exactly what I wanted you to kind of touch on. Tell me more about what you've gotten to experience, because I do think so interesting, right? The past couple of years, how we've gotten away from it's just kind of the split, right? It's like almost people are so much longing for the personal interaction and, Mm -hmm. or we've gotten to where we don't even know what to expect anymore. I feel like it's like this, either we definitely need and are craving this and longing for that. And so grateful for someone they can just call and ask the questions from. It's part of why we do the discovery sessions, all those kinds of things. Like you said, access to your actual provider um, without a ton of steps or a ton of barriers. What's that been like? Cause I mean, I don't even like saying the word, but the pandemic, that was mm-hmm. part of what prompted your whole new business model. Anyway, what have you been able to experience as a provider? Um, even on the client end of things, those shifts that we've all experienced since that. happened. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that you said kind of the two sides. Cause I do feel like you know, we are somewhat divided for in multiple areas of life and especially in healthcare. I've experienced uh, a lot of distrust in the system where people 
uh, will call me and immediately they're asking, you know, how do you practice? What do you do for this? What do you do for that? Almost like a somewhat of an interrogation, which mm-hmm. I love that people want to know who I am and how I practice. I think that's amazing. And I think that's totally fair. Um, I do think that the pandemic has created some distrust amongst the medical community and people thinking they're going to see me and I'm going to say, you know, well, here's that pill, here's this pill, take this, you know, do that. Uh, I won't treat you unless you have, you know, this or that. And that's, that's just not how I operate. You know, I'm someone that I want to figure out what the root cause of your problems are. I want to treat you. I don't want to just treat the disease. Um, While that can be very important in managing diseases, I also want to know how can I help you be more successful? Maybe if you and I aren't connected anymore, or if you go see someone else, you know, I still want to help you be the best you, right? Um, And then I've also on the flip side had people that have been so disconnected from the medical community because everything is done on video. Nobody has put their hands, you know, on their shoulder when they're listening to their heart and listening to their their lungs, the things that are very important, that personal touch. Sorry about my dogs. Um, And I have people that are just longing for that. You know, they're like, I want you to come to my house. Um, and it's been, it's been a challenge, you know, it, it's sad really. So I have seen both ends and it's like, how do we try to recreate that trusting relationship where people are coming back and trusting their provider? Can we just take a moment? And I know you just muted and we were talking about this before we hit record. So you own a business, it's successful and thriving. I own a business, it's successful and thriving, but we make time for this. And you're in your home. I'm in my home. Mm -hmm. We're connecting. We're working. We're sharing information. And like, I appreciate that. Of course, the dog's barking is annoying. It's part of why I'm upstairs with my door shut and all of that in the guest bedroom. Like, (laughs) but like, I just want to take a minute and celebrate the fact that we get to do what we want and we get to do Mm -hmm. it how we want to do it. And we get to connect in the ways we want to connect with ourselves and with other providers and with our clients. And, um, you know, when we started talking, that was one of my favorite things about you was I could tell that obviously the whole getting to the root cause Mm -hmm. and then also wanting to connect with other private providers, because it's important to stay in our lane. But I think one of the reasons that we're having success is because like you said, people do want that personal touch, my practice, the way you were set up, I'm able to listen to their whole story. I'm able to take into account, not just their pelvic health history or their physical fitness, like for physical therapy, but how's their nutrition? How's their sleep? How's their hormone levels? And again, I'm not a medical provider in that way. So I work with naturopaths and physicians Mm -hmm. and nurse practitioners and nutritionists and midwives and all the other connections that I know you're making as well to get clients the the health and the thriving so they're not just sort of suffering and um managing right. symptoms um so yeah i know the dogs were barking but i'm like <laughs> dude our lives are freaking awesome and yeah, they are <laughs> this this needs to be the way of the future this needs to be something that a lot more providers and women see possible and happening for mm-hmm. themselves so yeah. bark on dogs bark on, i know they're so we wild. can they work wherever whenever like <laughs> i'm like i was like i get i totally get it because i was thinking about the same thing with mine i'm like where can i be where's the lighting like where's the noise level all that stuff i was thinking about the same thing but i'm like you know what this is awesome it's life like, yeah it's, it's life, life yeah. and at least we can do this you're at home i'm at home like we both have yes. other stuff the rest of our days but like yeah, we can take the time to have these conversations and connect and it's awesome. And if it's not that it's my two year old running by in his cowboy boots that sound like some horses running down the hallway. So I'm like, if it, it's one or the other, really, right, right. We'll take a little dog barking. It's okay. <laughs> or like all the zooms during the pandemic where like people were accidentally walking by naked. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Yep. Yep. Live not that, remembering live that before. Not remembering to mute, not remembering to turn cameras off. Like, yeah. Or we've those learned filters. so much about each other. Oh yeah. Or like that, that poor lawyer that ended up with a cat filter on his face during an important legal <laughs> meeting with the judge. That's probably one of my all time. It happens. Okay. It happens. I massively digressed, but 
that that was just awesome. I was like, I'm not scared. Of this. I don't care. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So clients. So again, just who, what are you working with the most these days? Is it mostly yeah, families? I, yeah. Are you seeing mm-hmm. kids? Do you see kids? Do you see babies? Let's cover some of that. Yeah. So I typically do six months and up. Um, and I would say the majority of my clients are families. So I see a lot of mainly moms and kiddos. Um, I will see some dads here and there if they need something, but a lot of times it's my moms and kids that I'm seeing, which is amazing because initially when I started, I thought having worked in the pandemic and seeing a lot of geriatric clients, I thought, well, this is going to be probably my market because they're home. No, not at all. Um, which has been such a blessing because I did a lot of geriatrics. So the fact that I get to kind of go backwards on the age scale and really take care of everyone has been incredible. And so, yeah, I think, you know, six months probably to like, I don't know, 13, 14 year, years old. And then their mamas are, are typically who I'm seeing. That I mean, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So earlier you brought up kind of when we were talking about some of the different perspectives people have um, some of the distrust of the medical community. And I think another thing that I really appreciate about you and what you're able to offer outside of any kind of corporate setting or, you know, office rules Mm -hmm. is that you don't ask parents about personal choices for their children. Um, you don't require certain things. You don't, discuss mandates and those kinds of things. And I think that's really important for anyone listening to know about choices. I think 2020 really made us look at our choices and which ones might be taken away and which Mm -hmm. ones might be changing and which ones might be more important to us because it hadn't been challenged before um, or those lines hadn't been crossed or whatever, however you want to phrase it. Um, is there anything else you want to say about that? Like, we don't need to get into politics or anything like super controversial unless you want right. to always game, but, um, <laughs> Segment that wasn't two. my point. <laughs> that wasn't my point. My point was more just having options and having choices yeah. and having the freedom. So I rant a lot about informed consent and to my definition of informed consent is here's information. Here's my recommendation. Here are the pros, here are the cons, Mm -hmm. here are any potential risks, here are the benefits. This is why I think that you should choose this. What would you like to do? That's my definition of informed consent. And I find it drastically and appallingly lacking. What is your definition of informed consent? Yeah, I would agree with you. My famous uh, slogan that I use is knowledge is power, right? And I feel like if you just kind of roll along with someone who's making the decision before you, you don't really know why you're making a decision. You're just making it. And so I have lots of conversations with my, my patients and their families, uh, especially, you know, if it's mom regarding kids and I will give them all the education that I have to offer. And then I always tell my patients, I support you no matter what your choice is. So I'm not going to treat you differently if you choose this route, or if you choose this route at the end of the day, I'm here to take care of you. And so, um, yeah, I, I agree. You know, I think that we are starting to really open up, uh, to a world that is, I don't know if the right word is, uh, more acceptable of choice and informed consent, but that's where we're at, which is great. And I think, you know, one of the, one of the blessings to come out of the pandemic is just that, uh, is that people feel like they have a voice, which is awesome. So, I do. I, I don't force things on people. I've had a lot of people ask me about, you know, vaccine status and if it's a requirement to see me, it is not. Um, and so I just, I feel like if I give people the education and if they're asking and I'm giving them to the best of my knowledge, what I have, and they decide to do whatever they decide to do with it, I back them a hundred percent. So. Yeah. One of my, I can't claim this slogan. It was um, taught to me by my my fascial teacher, John Barnes, but he says without awareness, there's no choice. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's like you said, the information, if you don't even have the information about options, how can you actually be making a conscious choice? Right. So yeah, hundred percent agree with, with you on that one. Um, and yeah, I just, information so hard to come by, right? Like it's not hard to come by. It's 
excessively abundant finding any truthful information. I think yeah. that really exploded in 2020. It was like, you could find research that would say any particular thing. And research used to be proven. It used to be reliable. It used to be, um, I don't know, it's just gotten so muddled. And so I think, yeah, just helping people navigate that confusing. I mean, you can Google and you know, look for your confirmation bias, you can find back in for just about anything. Mm -hmm. um, so helping people navigate through the BS and, and through the rhetoric and um, truly see options. And it's not just two sides. It's not just right, wrong. It's not just black, white. It's, it's, well, there's lots of right ways to do this. That's one thing I try to tell our mamas a lot. It's like, it's not just cloth or disposable. It's not just breast or formula. It's like, there's a lot of right mm -hmm. ways to do this journey. And a lot of, I hope it's giving them peace. I hope mm -hmm. it's making them feel calmer and a little more empowered to just ease up on themselves and right. all options and just breathe. Yes. Inhale. Oh, inhale. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Hence the yoga at our space. Um, <laughs> well anyway, done. well, I just want to give you a minute to kind of, when you think about bellies, babies and birth and mamas and raising families, what else do you try to help your clients know? Or what else do you want to share? Oh, geez. I just, I think you cut it really summing up what you and I talked about is that mamas, babies, bellies, humans, we deserve so much better than what we're getting right now. Huge. That is my biggest thing is that don't be scared to advocate for yourself. You have a voice, which is beautiful. And as a mom, this is like a big trigger for me when I hear people say, I talked to somebody and they just dismiss me and said, it's this, 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 like, mamas know best and I will live and die by that statement so for me it's just you know we deserve better we deserve better and I could get so fired up talking about that and just put up my six foot soapbox and just start preaching it to the world but you know I just I don't want people to be scared to push for themselves you know you deserve better and whatever in whatever avenue that is if it's postpartum care if it's health care if it you know whatever the case may be you deserve better and I want to walk alongside my clients and do that and that's my two and a half year old slamming cabinet so oh, he's I didn't like even hear that one he's like cheering me on as yeah. I'm talking about this he's like yes mom yes um so I just you know, we deserve to have people who walk alongside us and cheer us on, not knock us down. And that is what I think everyone deserves. 100%. I can't really think of a better note to end on. <laughs> um, so you guys, concierge doesn't necessarily mean high price. Please, when you're choosing providers or factoring in what you need. I know we do a ton of education, just like what is pelvic physical therapy? Cause most people have never heard of it and knowing choices and knowing options factor in the time of calling in and making appointments. Obviously you would still have to call Shiana and get something scheduled, but you're not driving there. You're not finding a sitter when you mom need an appointment. Now something to be said for moms being able to get out of the house alone. Um, but you know, just, the, yeah, just the convenience and the ability to ask questions. I know our clients share pretty often that they're grateful. I, you know, I tell them at the end of every appointment, like when you get these emails, even our weekly ones that we send to everybody, if you reply, it comes straight to me. I see it. I read it. I care about that. And I responded to two people this morning who we're reading, we're responding to emails that get sent automatically checking in on how their care is going. But I get those emails. And I think that, like you said, the personal touch, someone who's going to care and no, I can't fix all the issues. I can't handle all the issues. I can't order blood work. I'm no expert in hormones, but I know tons of people who are, and I know you mm -hmm. and I both spend time and money um, networking and meeting providers and, um, getting educated about other people and what they offer and how they can help our clients so that we can truly support them in that team. 
and love that about you. I'm super grateful that you took the time to chat some more today. Yeah. Thank you um, so much. I'm grateful yeah. to be here. It's been an honor. My pleasure. And hopefully this helps some of our clients and whoever's listening anywhere, wherever you are in the country, the world, whatever, there are providers changing their practices. There are all, you know, name, name a service that you might need. And people are becoming more and more mobile and people are becoming much and much more start to hear concierge as customized. Absolutely. Um, start to hear um, cash based as customized. My husband was frustrated with me. Um, I had to leave work soon yesterday. And so I still had to finish some notes and home program emails. And he's like, why can't you make a template? And like, if they have this problem, you send this email. I was like, he's like, I'm like, cause my clients aren't the same. He's like, well, what if it's like prolapse? Didn't you just send the same exercises if they, if they all have prolapse? And I was like, no, <laughs> he's like, well, couldn't you? I'm like that that I was like, I will think about that. He was really just trying to help me find ways to be more efficient and not spend as much time on notes. I get that. I was like, that, I don't, that, uh, what? Like, I'm like, that is not what we do. Like, that's the whole yeah. opposite of why I was like, templates and protocols are not my jam. Like, yeah. Yeah. And you easily anyway. could. The answer to that is yes, I could, but that's just not how you roll. Yeah. So I was like, babe. Um. <laughs> so yeah, we, Start to look for providers that are listening to the whole story that will yeah. take whatever time you need. Uh, when was the last time you went anywhere and had a 45 minute appointment with a doctor of any kind, nurse practitioner, mm -hmm. any kind of appointment like that? Yeah. Yikes. That's awesome. Yeah. No, I need yeah, to be I, heard. You, yeah, yeah. People need to be listened to. And they do. Like you said they know, they know themselves. They know what they're feeling they know what their normal is they know what's right. off right and sometimes we can talk ourselves right into an answer which is great if you actually hear the whole story absolutely well thanks again for taking the time shanna yes, and uh, tell people where they can find more about you of course we'll put it in the show notes and everything but where can they get information on you and on your services Yes. So the best way uh, to find information, updates, uh, you can see a lot of silly things. I get a little wild with my social media sometimes. So you can look up at your doorstep medical and concierge care on Facebook and Instagram. It will pop up for you if you just search it into Google. And then I do have a website that I put updates in, in my services. Uh, it's at your doorstep medical.com. And so the best way to get a hold of me is either sending me an inquiry through the website because it comes right to my phone, or you can call the number on the website, um, which is my business line that'll come to my phone as well. So either way, and, and if you're interested um, in either form, reach out and then we can set up a time to do an intro call. Awesome. Thank you so yes. much. All right, you guys, Thank that's you. another episode of Bellies, Babies and Birth. Stay tuned for next time. We'll be bringing you more community connections and resources to help you live your best life healthy and free of limitations. So we'll talk to you guys soon.